welcome to Ladies Talking Business on Plus TV Africa. Our guest on today's episode is Tracy Nwakwa. Tracy is the owner and creative director of Interior Culture by Obiageli. Tracy, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Fantastic studio, thank by you, the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And I mean, we've waited so long to have you in the studio. Thank you so much for making our time to join us here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I apologize for all it's the, okay. you know, but <laughs> <laughs> thank So Tracy you. always wants to change the, her room space every five minutes. What brought about the transitioning from TV to interior design? Um... It's a long story, but I just, I, I put this on, you know, your purpose in life. And sometimes to get to our purpose, we have to go through a journey. Mm -hmm. And as we travel through this journey of life, you discover your purpose. Um, I study, I mean, from childhood, I've always had a flair, a natural flair for interior design. I used to change my room, like you said, like <laughs> from when I was a little girl. And um, I decided at some point, you know, I would, so I, I, you know, I said I was going to be an, inter an architect because my dad's a civil engineer and we, I come from a family of builders. My dad's a civil engineer, my uncle's an architect. Mm -hmm. um, and I just always had that flair. But I'll tell you a secret. Well, it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> when I went into college, um, university in the United States, um, I had to, to study architecture, you have to be really good at math. And I am so horrible at math. So I was forced to study interior design as a minor. And I took on broadcast journalism, which is the next best, best thing um, as my major. So obviously, being that I studied broadcast journalism, that has, to, that has to do with being on TV. So when I came back to Nigeria, I was pursuing a career in broadcast journalism. And um, when I did my NYC, I was supposed to serve at NTA. So I okay. you know, got to a little bit of experience. I worked at NN24 and various other TV um, networks. Down the line, I just everything was just not working out. Like every time I would start something or go for auditions, I never got it. Like people just think, oh, Tracy just appeared, you know. So I started producing my own show, and I just, I guess, I wasn't as passionate because it was, it was just tedious, and mm. I just, I wasn't passionate, passionate enough to to push. To push. And through that, um, my brother actually, because I used to do my house all the time, I'll help my mom. Even as a young adult, um, and my dad, in my, in my brother's company at the time, they were looking for interior designers to renovate their office space. And this was back in 2013. And he was like, Tracy, I think you should apply. I think you should do it. And I was like, are they going to choose me? I'm not really a certified interior designer. And it was, a big, it was like a big job. at the, It was an oil company. And I was like, you know what, let me try. So I did a 3D, went over there. And I got the job out of three uh, people bidding. So when I did that, I was like, wow, I really like this. And it was good money. And I, I enjoyed like just creating a space like from nothing to something. And I was just like, you know what, this is what I want to do. So that was where I transitioned from, you know, being a broadcast journalist, journalist to, or being on TV to being a full-time interior designer. Yeah, and I liked what you said about the fact that at the end of the day, what drives you is passion in exactly. whatever it is you're doing. Exactly. Because no matter how strong you are personally, I feel like your passion, even in your times of very, of weakness, mm -hmm. you find strength exactly. from your passion. So it's very important to do what it is you really love to exactly. do. Exactly. Now, when it comes to interior design and interior decoration, people tend to confuse both. Help us understand it. Okay, so in my opinion, and I think this is the general knowledge, um, Interior designers actually like design the space, so they design spaces. Um, you have nothing in a space, you put it together, all the, you know, from the ceilings to the floor, so everything that has to do with the interior of a space. So deciding what goes where, managing the space, um, the color, lines, textures, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, that's what an interior designer does. And then even furniture as well, lighting, um, um, flooring, you know, window treatment, but then, uh, interior decorated, de decorator, I think, enhances what an interior designer does. So mostly okay. with soft furnishings. So an interior designer or an interior architect can create a space and you know give you all the visuals. But the interior decorator comes and like accessorizes the space with soft furnishings. So it could be with drapes or um, pillows or accessories, mm -hmm. rugs, stuff to just Finishing enhance the space. Basically. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But an interior designer also does the job of an interior decorator, but an interior decorator doesn't really do all that an interior designer does. They won't have to draw 3Ds? Um, anyone can do a 3D. Oh, it doesn't okay, matter. Okay, okay. Um, but 
just I think uh, the interior designer's main role is to take care of the entire space. Okay. So from start mm -hmm. to finish, um, but interior decorator enhances what the interior designer does. Okay. So sometimes um, if you have an architect who is just an architect, who, who does like the entire space, like from the floors to the ceiling, has a rug or, or has a sofa, mm -hmm. you know, a lighting, a cabinet, an interior decorator will come in and be like, okay, we're gonna put a coffee table with these accessories on okay. it. We're gonna put these accessories on the coffee on the on the credenza or a nightstand. So that's so uh, interior decorator pretty much enhances the space. Mm -hmm. So basically, how would you describe the interior design market in Nigeria? Um, it's definitely growing, but it's also getting a little bit saturated, um, which is a good thing um, because it then forces everyone to kind of compete and mm -hmm. healthy competition though. Mm -hmm. um, when I started, there were not half as many interior designers or half as many people doing, you know, on, on, a, on a more international scale. But the, it, it's a growing market. Um, we're not there, you know, we're not there yet where we're standardizing, you know, you, but we're not quite there, but we're, we're getting there. And uh, do you see a lot of collaborations being done in that space? There are How collaborations. I mean, with the help of the Interior Design um, Association of Nigeria, Aiden, and Made by Design, these are some, um, you know, they are organizations for interior designers to come in and collaborate, share ideas, mm -hmm. just being part of an organization so you don't feel left out. You can meet, you can have a mentor who would, you know, advise you on how to grow or how to grow your business, how to start your business. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, also a support thing. And if you, if I'm so busy right now and I, I can't take on like a, a lot of jobs, I can call, you know, a colleague and say, you know, here, can you handle this project? I trust okay, you enough to okay. do this. So it is a nice community for interior designers. So yeah, there are collaborations, you know, people do collaborations and you know, not everyone can do everything. There's specialization. So like someone can specialize in just doing floors and window, okay. window treatments. Some, someone can specialize in just um, sanitary wear. So in this community, everyone kind of knows where they fit and I can order accessories from a company. That's a collaboration. I can order, you know, you know, um, rugs or, you know, you know, what, what have you, artwork from another company, that's a collaboration. So, so yeah, what we're are definitely... the other areas that people can get into aside from floors and, yeah? Um, ceilings, it's, it's vast, you know. Oh. Um, some people only do furniture production. So you just send a picture of what you want and then they will produce it for you. Some people do in, in the design. So my company, we, spend, we do everything. So we, do, we take a, a turnkey project, we, start, we do it from start to finish. Okay. And obviously I, can't, I, I, don't, I, I have to work with vendors. I have to work with, I don't, I don't sell sanitary wear for instance. So I have to work with a vendor who would supply me, you know. So that's, that, those are, those are, there are loads of things that you, know, you can get into. It could be wall finishing, it could be flooring, rugs, accessories, lighting, window treatments, um, marble, glass, woodwork, you know, handles, some people even, and, okay. and, and now things are easy to find. It was, it was much harder when I started. Now you can see a vendor who only supplies handles, like drawer mm -hmm. handles and, you know, hardware, you can now find people who only supply, like, fabric for drapes. Lighting. Or lighting, you know. It's, 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 it, the, the industry is definitely getting better. There's now a need for people to actually do these things so we can have access to them. The problem back then was the access. Almost everything had to be imported. So even though people are importing it, there's now, they've now bridged the gap between having to, me having to, me as an interior designer, having to okay. order from outside the country. So those people who are now vendors for these items sort out all of that and they have it here presently and then we can order directly from them. But from your area of um, specialization, I know that you do everything in your company. Mm -hmm. Did you start off like that? And if, as a newcomer, would you suggest that I also start off doing everything or I should just create a niche market for myself? You see, when I started, it was kind of different. So I kind of had to do everything. I still do everything now, but for someone who is starting out now, you have to go with what you're good at, you know, your strengths. So if you want to do everything, fine. It's kind of difficult to do everything because it's a lot of things to source. Okay. But um, you can do everything or you can decide that, you know, I want to just focus on kitchens or I want to focus okay. on just bathrooms. 
or whatever your strengths are and wh where your passion you know lies, lies that's where you should follow mm -hmm. but there's no you can decide to create a niche for yourself i know people who only do um, fabrics that they've tie dyed and that's all they do and I know people who do full spaces I think it's not so much finding a niche for yourself it's more finding your own style you know so you're not ending up just copying um, inspiration pictures online mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, you know you're you're finding your own style your own so people because I feel like my it style should be unique yeah it mm -hmm. should be um, I have a signature so even though creating the same design or mm -hmm. I, and, and we're theme designers, so we can do anything. We could be Afrocentric, we could be minimalist, we could be mm -hmm. contemporary, mm -hmm. transitional contemporary. It doesn't matter. But there's still a signature stamp that people will be like, "This is icy," you mm -hmm. know. This is interior culture. So that is important, you know. Finding yourself as opposed to that you don't look like. It's just like you know, your sister is an interior design, a, 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 fashion, a fashion designer. designer. Mm -hmm. She has a, you know, she has a style. So I see some work clothes that she makes and I've and I've worn certain times and I would know automatically now just based on working with her that this is Karen Ubani. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's more so finding your own style and yeah, then that can now transcend to your niche as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like the fact that this has been explained. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at the Nigerian interior design space mm -hmm. and juxtaposing it with a Cape Town, for example, known as the design capital of the world. <laughs> In terms of scale of operation, you can see that massive gap. Don't mm -hmm. you think we should be doing a lot more in Nigeria? Yes, I mean, of course, we should be doing a lot more, but it takes time. Um, I think we're headed in the right direction. Like I said, in 2013, 2014, we didn't have everything that we have now. But look, it's been, what, seven, eight years, or seven years, and we have more now. So give it another, Cape Town wasn't built overnight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and now I think we are now understanding that there's a need. I think people didn't care before how their spaces looked. It was a Nigerian thing where, you know, you build a house, you just put your chair, you put your table, you put your fan, <laughs> you put your, but now people are trying to pay attention. They want the detail. They want the detail. They want mm -hmm. a nice space. Even stores now, hair stores or, mm -hmm. or, or, or commercial stores, they now understand the importance of an aesthetically pleasing environment. Back then, people didn't care. People just wanted to just do the bare minimum. But with the help of social media I, and the internet and just being connected to the world through social media, I think people are now realizing that it is important. It's not enough to just sell amazing food. The space has to pull you in because you're pulled in by the space. So if the you space- take good pictures Exactly, you go exactly, meal. exactly. So you're pulled in by the space. That adds to the experience before you can enjoy the meal or, you know, so I think people are now realizing the importance and because of that a gap you know there's there's this there's this opportunity that has been created for people like me to excel in the industry so with that being said i think as time goes on we'll keep growing and before you know we'll get to we'll get to the standard or the level of you know cape town being the design capital i think one one, one of the spaces in my head now is tea room for example okay. you're going there you know that oh my goodness i can take good pictures while having a very nice exactly. meal right exactly all right so we're going to take a quick break now mm -hmm. we'll take a quick break as you're watching ladies talking business on plus tv africa Thank you for staying with us. We're still speaking with Tracy Umwakpa. All right, Tracy, before we went on the break, we were talking about leveraging social media. So how exactly have you been able to leverage social media to boost your business? And how can people who are in the interior design business also do this? Okay, I have to say social media is like 70% of my clients come from social media. Ooh. You see, interior design is a very visual business. So when you post pictures or images or video of... Um, whatever you've done, people can see it. So it's easy for them to buy into it. Mm. And I don't play with social media at all. I have kind of mastered the art of using social media. Social media does not use me. Do you want to <laughs> share some tips with us? <laughs> um, um, Insta story. So mm. I, I definitely always post uh, before and afters. I tell stories about the space. Um, it, pictures are just important. You like, make people connect with it. Yes, I ask if people absence. ask questions, I respond to them, I post them on my personal page, I post them on the other page, I tell a story with whatever it is that I'm posting, so people buy into it. And also, um, it kind of helps because I have a bigger following on my personal page, so that kind of, when I, when I post stuff about my um, 
uh, about my interior projects, the okay. folding from my page kind of like filters into the interior culture the page as well. Space. Exactly. Okay. Um, so I think consistency for sure. You can't just ever stop posting. You always have to post. Like I'm, I haven't been that great because I'm so busy, but. Um, I have someone who handles um, my pages in-house, but the actual page, I'm very particular, so I do that myself. Mm. Um, so consistency, great lighting, show details of the work, because obviously people edit a lot, so, and now people don't believe that, oh, this looks that this good. This is the actual thing. Exactly. So I try to show videos as well, so you can see that, listen, I'm, I can't edit a video. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then, through that, I also post like feedbacks from from, okay. from clients, okay. um, so that people can see that can, can see that this is a real person that I actually worked with, and this this real person was happy with their space. Um, so yeah, those are those are like the key I think pointers that have helped me um, in terms of growing you know my Instagram following and just putting my work out there. I like the bit when you said you've mastered the art of social media. Mm -hmm. Social media doesn't use you, you use yeah, social media. A lot of people are used by social media. I go to I use social media to help me in my business and mm -hmm. to motivate me and to inspire me. I'm not used by social media in the sense that it doesn't consume me, it doesn't take you know, all of my time or I don't feed into the neg negativity of social media. Everything I do is for my business. Even mm -hmm. if I'm dressing nice and taking pictures, I know that if you see that I'm looking nice and taking pictures, you'll be inspired to look nice and take pictures. And you also kind of go through my page and find that, oh, this is what she does. She's an interior designer. Oh, okay. Oh, what's her page? And then click the link and they're like, oh, I know this person. I'm going to refer her to this person or I'm going to use her for this purpose. So mm -hmm. it's all part of using social media. Mm -hmm. I like I, I absolutely can't agree any less mm -hmm. by that. Now, when you, how are you with all of these things putting in a lot of detailing when you're creating nice spaces? How are you able to maintain the blend between what the client wants? You know, some clients will give you specifications of what mm -hmm. they want, mm -hmm. but how are you able to combine that and ensuring that your creativity still stays alive? Most of the time, to be frank. Um, I think the clients trust me enough, so they don't okay. like bombard me with strict guidelines. Well, they give me guidelines okay. that I follow, so I'm able to, um, you know, visualize or come up with ideas based on the guidelines that they've given me. Okay. Um, okay. There are some clients that know exactly what they want, so you have to work with exactly what they, you know, with their exact requirements. Mm -hmm. And I also have clients who don't even have an idea of what they want at all, and they're just like, you know what, Tracy look at this space, I don't know what I want, I just know I'm going to live here, I need a bed, I need a, I know I need a place to entertain my I guests, trust you, Tracy. I trust you, just do whatever mm -hmm. you want. And then, but it is important though for clients to give a guideline, because at the end of the day, it would help narrow down, it would help understand what you want, and then I can now um, create based on your needs, the function, okay. functionality of the space, and your style, you know. People have different styles, you know, so it's important. So what I do to help that help with that is I send images of different kind of styles okay, of, okay. of different rooms, and I say, okay, what what rooms do you like in the space? Like with, based on these pictures I've sent you, what do you connect more with? And then if they connect with a, an image that I know that is transitional contemporary, then I'll be like, okay, so this is your style. Then I'll I'll design based on on that, having that in oh, mind. Okay. So okay. that that's a trick. That's a neat trick to kind of understand a client who doesn't know what they want. And finally, on financial investment, what level of financial investment is required to start off an interior design business? Mm. Um, you see, the trick... a whole lot? I don't think so. I didn't start with a whole lot of money. Um, I worked on a contract basis with my artisans um, in the beginning. So, and I was everything in the beginning. I was my accountant, I was the, the designer, I was the marketer, I was everything. And then I had a, I had a, a lady who's worked with me for, since I started. And so in the beginning, you are, you are doing everything okay. and you're contracting the job. So it's based, on the jo it's based on the jobs you get that you're able to pay your artisan. So it's not like you just have people that you're on, on a payroll that you have to pay even though you're not getting any business. So if, if for instance, if you have a, a, a corporate uh, office to do, you give them your bill, you put in your profit and your damages and you know, ev your miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. And based on that, you know that you can do the job. So if they pay you 70%, you're paying your artisans a certain percentage. And when, they, when you're done, you pay them their balance. And then you get your balance from the clients. And then you, you balance your books. So I don't think you need 
a huge startup capital to actually do what I do. I didn't have an office in the beginning. I was working from my house. I had my laptop. And um, based if I needed to do a 3D, I would work, I would contract someone, and that payment would be coming from the payments of the job. Okay, Obviously, okay. there are times you have to take risks because you can be, you can try to get a job and you may not get it, but you've, you needed to have paid um, a graphic designer. So there are times that that is a little bit tricky, but I don't think you need a huge sum of money to invest. Now, if you want to sell products, for instance, if, you are, if, you are, if you're a candle, you sell home fragrances or you mm -hmm. sell pillows or sheets, yes, you probably need startup okay, capital okay. so you can purchase the goods that you plan to sell you know, initially. But for, to offer a service, you don't really need, you, I don't, you could start with zero Naira, in my opinion. Oh, nice. Yeah. We're out of time, but I think I need to mention this because it talks about artisans. How are you able to manage artisans in Nigeria? Because mm. I think that's a very important conversation to have. Yes, it is. It's actually the most important. Um, artisans in Nigeria, you know, we don't have, you see, if you go to places like Togo or in the Western world, a painter is a professional in the sense that they went to school, they passed, they, learned, went, they, they a learned a craft like to the T. Here, we don't really have, I don't know if we have, in my experience, I, I don't know of any like, you know, school for craft for, you know, art, you know for, for artisans. I don't know of any school where you can learn how to paint, you can learn how to, to study carpentry. People are... The people that are carpenters now or in the furniture business now learns from an apprentice who learns from an, you know, who, who sorry, they learn from um, their boss, you know, as an apprentice and, you know, you just on and on and on. Like so that. they don't really learn the actual skills. Like I can have my screeder come here now with this table here and these chairs. He's going to start screeding. He doesn't cover up the, he doesn't cover up the existing furniture. So I had to take my time to teach them and be like, you know what, this is the right way. These, and then you have to spoon feed them in the beginning. I've, some of my artisans have worked with me from the very beginning for about eight years now. Um, so teaching them proportions, teaching them